Hi guys, so today we're going to be making a uh, Snapchat clone and in the Snapchat clone we're not going to make it exactly like Snapchat but we're going to focus on you know s some of the essential features and you guys can build it up um, to be more similar to Snapchat afterwards. So uh, we're going to be emphasizing two things. The first thing we'll emphasize today uh, is connecting your app to backend. So we're going to be using Parse uh, as a backend service uh, for our application today. Um, so the first thing we'll emphasize is how to connect your app to Parse. And the second thing that we'll emphasize uh, is how to display some of that content. So uh, we're going to be using a UI table view to display that in our Xcode project. Um, okay, so as a first step, uh, go to bitbucket.org. Uh, and this is just, you know, another version control system website, in case you didn't know. It's just like GitHub. So if you go and you type in um, find wasa demo, so WSSA demo, and you click on it, then down here you can go to downloads and you can go to branches and you can download the zip file for it so this is basically just a starter project um, sometimes you know uh, installing parse uh, into your project can be a headache it can cause some problems that are unforeseen and um, I, I don't want to go through that headache right now just because we are focusing on how to actually write some of the parse code um, but parse installation isn't too bad so you can definitely look that up um, so we'll wait for the project to download but once the project is downloaded we'll open it up and we'll double click on the .xcode project file and that should open up in Xcode any minute Awesome. Okay, so you'll see you you have all this stuff right here, and this is basically just Parse's SDK uh, input into your uh, Xcode project, so that you can use um, you can use basically all the Parse functionality that you need. So, in case you guys haven't done so already, uh, go and take a look online at Parse.com. So, Parse is basically this backend service. Um, and it lets you, you know, store information in a database and retrieve it. And it's made things really simple for developers these days. So um, it's it's pretty popular. So that's what we're going to be using for, for today's demo. So first thing that we want to do is we want to think, you know, how is our app going to look? We just sort of want to think it out in our mind and maybe sketch it out a little bit. Um, so maybe pause the video and go ahead and do that. Um, and then you can repl uh, replay it from this point. Um, but other, otherwise feel free to just follow along. So we have one view controller right here and I've made the size iPhone 4 inch just for simplicity purposes and in our first view controller um, we basically want a text field for the user to be able to log, log in so we'll, we'll search for a text field UI element right here and we'll drag it in and we'll center it horizontally and we'll drag it out to the margins and we'll see these blue lines appear and then we'll give it a placeholder text and we'll say username for the placeholder text and we'll center that just so it looks a little better and then we'll add a label at the top for the title of the app so we'll place that label right here we'll double tap on it and we'll call it snapchat clone ish All right, so now that we have that Snapchat uh, clone-ish label right there and we have a uh, text field for users to input their username into, uh, we're going to need one more button. And that button, uh, oops, let's drag it in. All right, so let's drag in that button, let's center it, and the text for that button will be login. So usually for apps, you know, you have a username and a password before you log in. But for simplicity purposes, we're just going to have a username right here. Um, and then we're going to log in the user. All right, so that's our first screen. So for our next screen, uh, let's drag in another view controller. And let's set the size to iPhone 4 inch. And on this uh, view controller, basically, people will be able to select an image and then upload it to the database. So the first thing that we want to do is drag in a button, and we'll center that on the screen. 
and we'll say select image. And what's the next thing that you uh, you want to do in your app once the user selects an image? You want to display it on the screen before they send it out. It's just something that you know typically apps do because let's say the user selected the wrong image. They don't want to send out the wrong image. They want to know which image they're sending out. So in order to display the image, we'll drag in an image view. And once we drag in that image view, we can center it above the select image button right here. And next, we want to drag in one more button at the bottom. And this will be to finally send the image to the database. So we'll call it post image. OK, so now that we have all of those elements there, let's think about you know, uh, some of the functionality that we want to add to this. We will have one more screen, which will ob obviously display all of the images that users have posted, but we'll get to that later. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to make sure all these elements don't move around. Sometimes, you know, since apps are so dynamic and content changes, you know, different images are displayed and etc. These are types in text, so the text field changes. Things can get resized, things can get moved around. So all we need to do is we'll go to this first view controller, we'll select any of these elements, and we'll click this small triangle on, on the bottom right, and we'll click Add Missing Constraints right here. So not the top one, we'll click this one at the bottom. And what that does is ba it basically adds constraints uh, to all of the elements on the screen. And it says that, hey, okay, so these elements are going to stay this size, they're not going to move around, they're uh, going to be sort of, you know, tied to the edge of the screen, what, by this spacing, this element is going to be this far away from this guy. So it basically just makes sure that your app looks nice. And, you know, uh, auto layout works great sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. Um, but for this app, we're gonna, just going to be using auto layout. So let's do the same thing for the next screen. And, all right. So now we have some of the basic elements that we need on our first two view controllers. Now it's time to you know write some code. Um, but before we can write code, we need some view controller.swift files. So you'll notice in the project that I've provided, there's this one view controller right here, but there's no view controller.swift file for it. So we'll go to File, New File, and we'll choose Iowa Source Cocoa Touch Class, and it will be a subclass of UI View Controller. And we'll call this first one login view controller. So, and yeah, we'll place it right into our project directory. Awesome. So it's right there. And I don't want mine to be just right there, so I'll just drag it in. So it's in the project right here. Okay. So next thing that we want to do is we want to connect our view controllers and our storyboard to that new file that we just created. So in order to do that, we'll click this yellow button at the top. We'll go right here and we'll specify the class. And we'll say login view controller. All right, so that means this view controller right here in the storyboard is connected to this code file right here. But we still need to do the same thing for the second view controller. So let's go ahead and create a file. So we'll say file, new file, and Cocoa Touch class, and a subclass of UI view controller. And we're going to call this one post image view controller. All right, let's press enter and enter, and we'll pop it into our project. Okay, so it's right there. So now let's go ahead and connect this view controller to that dot .swift file. All right, so post image view controller connected. Awesome. So we have all of this, but we haven't set up our database yet. So that's something that's really important for this project. We need to set up our parse backend. In order to do that, let's go to parse.com. And if you haven't created an account already, go ahead and create an, uh, create an account. Um, but I already have one, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to create app and I'm going to create a new app and I'll call this Snapchat clone ish and I'll create that application right there and now it's giving me all of its keys okay that's fine um, I'll go to data browser and over here you'll see uh, we're in parse core and this is basically where we're going to add our data tables. So the first data table we'll add, we can do that by clicking Add Class, and that'll be an inbuilt user data table. So we'll create that class, awesome, and it comes in it comes uh, with a bunch of inbuilt fields. All right. So the second data table that we're going to add is going to be a custom data table, and we're going to call it Images. So 
All right, so we created that images data table. Uh, but in that images data table, we're going to need a few more columns. So let's first think about what we are storing in, this two, in these two data tables. In the user data table, we'll, we will store all of the users that sign up using the app. Uh, and we're, we're just going to store their basic information, like username um, and whatever, whatever else we want to store. The second data table, images, will actually store the image objects that they upload using the app. And in order to do that, we first need to store an image object. And the way you do that with parse is you use a file, or a PF file in this case. So um, we'll just give it a field name, and we'll call it image. So now we have an image column. And the last thing that we need is to, we need to add a column because we need to be able to see in this database for each row, for each image, who created that image, who put, uh, put it up. So we're going to add um, a string column, and we're going to call it created by. Awesome. So now for each image that we have in here, we will also know who created that image or who posted that image um, so that we can display it later on. All right. So the first thing that we want to do now is we want to go into our application and we want to go into this app delegate.swift. And over here, we want to make sure that we copy in the right string. Um, so we need to so parse has a bunch of you know data tables a bunch of apps in the back end and we want to make sure that we connect our back end with that application so the way that we do that is we go to settings and 